Hello. Uh, welcome to Silent Hill 3. Hopefully you can hear me all right. Uh, and hopefully the screen is also displaying all right because I've had problems in the past. Um, but this is, I'm playing the Silent Hill games in kind of a funny order. I'm going backwards from four. And I'll definitely, obviously, playing three. And then I'll probably play two as well. Um, oops, I need to see that again. So at the start, fairly discordant imagery. There was this beautiful song uh, by... Akira Yamaka sung by Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, uh, and it's played over these sort of highly disturbing visuals, uh, and that's really what Silent Hill is all about. But Silent Hill 3 gets kind of a bad rap, um, at least sort of in the modern day, because a lot of people after Silent Hill 2 were sort of expecting the series to go one way, to sort of be episodic and stand alone, but Silent Hill 3 sort of pulled it back to the story of the first game. And a lot of people see that as having ruined, ruined the series basically, or started it on the downhill, uh, started it on the downhill trend, and that's obviously not. Uh, I think that's a bit harsh because this game uh, is still one of my favourite games. Um, it does a lot of really, really, really excellent things. Um, it's filled with probably, arguably, even more disturbing imagery than the fourth one. And it's probably, in terms of just raw fear factor, out of the original four games, this is probably the scariest one of them all. Um, so I think personally, yeah, it gets a bit of a it gets a bit of a tough time, and I don't think that's really fair. But I have only played this one once, um, so I'm not going to be I'm probably not going to whiz through it as quick as I did uh, Silent Hill Four because simply I don't know my way around it. Um, quite as well, even though I still love it. So I've played it sort of one and a half times, maybe. Um, as for difficulty, I've been mulling this over in my head. Uh, whether I should go normal or hard. Um, I, pro I know that if I go on hard, it'll probably be a struggle all the way through to the end. Um, but that, I don't know, that could be fun. We'll try We'll try hard. I know also on PC that um, you can save uh, the game sort of anytime you want, rather than at um, notepads or save squares or in this game um, halo of the, the halo of the sun symbol drawn in blood somewhere in the game um, so maybe maybe the ability to save because I've only played this on the PS2 maybe the ability to save anywhere uh, will offset the difficulty uh, elsewhere and I'm gonna just gonna go normal riddle difficulty because um, hard riddle difficulty in this game is pretty infamous um, it's like the first the first puzzle is really hard uh, it requires this sort of in-depth knowledge of Shakespeare um, that um, it is sort of if you didn't if you don't have the internet um, or you don't have a copy of the complete works of Shakespeare, basically the riddle is unsolvable, and it's basically it's not a good way to uh, design a puzzle where you need outside where you need outside information. So we'll go hard normal. This normal's fair, but um, not like completely stresses you out. You can see, yeah, this really sort of strange imagery, and this, yeah, this title is unique um, in the Silent Hill series because it's the only game I think in which you uh, don't play as a, um, you know, straight white man. Um, so Team Silent took advantage of this, and they've used, um, they've approached the horror from a different angle, basically. So thematically, it's a bit different, simply even just because of the protagonist, Heather. Okay, so here's the question. I only booted this up uh, once just to test uh, that it was okay and test the controls. So I'll just make sure I, <laughs> I have the controls down. So we've got our usual usual attacks. Um, and so we've got our first sort of creepy rabbit doll. No, it's a costume. Is there someone in there? Looks like there is, but I don't feel like making sure. And you can sort of immediately see 
this sort of feeling of feeling of tense oppression going on. And yep, shift to sprint, and once again we've got these funky camera angles, um, and we can't leave the park. Um, so the only choice, of course, is to go further in. But since we've just started the game, uh, the game is very kind of us, kind enough to give us sort of a preview of some of the weapons uh, that we can get later on. <laughs> um, okay, escape doesn't work apparently. Oops. We need to equip it to use it. Cool. Okay. And those menu sounds. I think everyone says this, but those menu sounds are just brilliant. So yeah. So we might as well just get stuck into it. So it's going to start off immediately with... Oh, that was good. I think I... Oh! As you can see, uh, enemies on hard difficulty, pretty hard, uh, don't go down very easily. So we're just stuck in here, get some small amount of relief. So yeah, you can just see that, as in typical Silent Hill fashion, everything is slightly off. And the fact that all of these symbols of childhood innocence are covered in blood um, is perhaps symbolically important. I'll get stuck into that a bit later. But for now the game basically is throwing you in sort of the deep end. Um, there's enemies, there's going to be enemies everywhere, sort of really hostile attacks. And oh, what happened? The game crashed, no. <laughs> Hopefully this doesn't happen again. Um, let's see, that's a pain, that's a pain, should be able to get right back into it though real quick, if that happens again though, that's not going to be good, hopefully it's just a one-off, because yeah, I've got to save from there if it does crash again, so hard, normal, Well, it never ends with technical problems on my streams. Okay. So we've sort of, we've got the feeling, the mood. Um, and I guess where Silent Hill 4 was a bit more, um, how would you say? I guess less, less traditional um, survival horror because it had this hub area. This one, this one, has all of these different areas. Oh. Ouch. They always get me coming up these stairs. And one thing you might notice um, is that the enemies in this game um, aren't quite as... I mean, it's hard to get enemies that are as symbologically potent as the ones in Silent Hill 2. Um, but the ones in this game weren't always explicitly designed with uh, symbolism in mind they could just look creepy like those like the big spinning pendulum i think they are called pendulums those monsters that just attack me on the stairs there and you know there's nothing safer than this and i think what's um unique about this entry as well is that uh heather can fall off um the sides of big gaps so you can't just sprint everywhere uh, and expect an invisible wall to save you. If you're moving too fast, uh, you will plummet to your death. Which sort of makes makes exploration a bit more tense, really. So 
So it makes that a bit more tense and makes fleeing from the monsters uh, more tense as well. And you'll note that um, where Silent Hill 1 and 2 had uh, pre-rendered FMV cutscenes, uh, Silent Hill 3, as you can see, uh, does not. They're all in-engine. Um, but if you look at the amount of detail on the character models, on the environment, on the lighting, you'll see that as much as I love the FMVs, and personally I kind of wish they kept them because they had this remarkable atmosphere, this in-engine cutscene is still... Uh, really, really, really well done. It's beautiful, in fact. Um, and it's amazing, because if you think this is 2003, this is PS2, PS2 hardware, um, and it's looking like this. So this, I think this is one of the best-looking games on the PlayStation 2, in fact. It's, it's just stunning. One of the best soundtracks in the series, yeah, too. It's me. Yeah. Sorry I didn't call sooner. Yeah, I guess I was. Anyway, I'm coming home now. Oh, I didn't get that thing you asked me to. Okay. <laughs> okay, I will. I love you too, Dad. Heather, I need to speak with you. My name is Douglas Clark. I'm a detective. A detective? Really? Well, nice talking to you. Hold on. There's someone that wants to meet you. Just let me have an hour. There's no half an hour of your time. Daddy always told me not to talk to strangers. This is very important. It's about your birth. I'm not interested. Are you still following me? Do I have to scream? Sorry. I'll wait. a pretty negative first encounter really with with another human being um in silent hill 1 it was a pretty positive encounter silent hill 2 was still all right um silent hill 4 still fine didn't end well but still fine uh, but silent hill 3 you've got this creepy creepy older guy who follows her through the mall and it's a pretty already pretty negative uh experience and sort of representative of the different kind of fear uh, that this new protagonist is sort of ringing, and it's it's just an unfortunate, unfortunate that that has to be a fear, really. Uh, yeah. And this is the save point. Um, so normally on the PlayStation 2 uh, version, or the other, or the Xbox version, uh, you'd be saving be saving like that um, but you don't really uh, you don't need to and the PC version and you see that we've got a block button so you can sort of like, ah <laughs> scared of our own reflection um, but you can see that there's slightly more technical side to the combat um, And the combat has slightly improved. So we don't want to go back out that way because the creepy detective is there. So we're going to go out the back here. And this track, I, <laughs> it's extraordinary. I mean, I don't... I listen to this uh, a lot of the time, this one. Um, perfect for sort of start of the morning or end of the day. Just sort of lazing around, kicking back, that sort of thing. It evokes this sort of perfect, perfect mood really i think the track is the soundtrack as a whole um sort of has a few more 
sort of punk punk tracks to reflect to reflect Heather's uh, age and Heather's tastes. And you'll notice um, Silent Hill is really good at doing this. Um, it'll switch camera angles to subtly emphasize uh, what you should be looking at. So we're going to go into the back areas of the mall. As usual, so the soundtrack is cut away into this sort of ugly silence. And if you've ever played a Silent Hill game before, you, or a horror game before, you'll be expecting bad things. And you can hear, you can hear the chatter of other people, so you're like, okay, we'll go in here and have a look. Those really disgusting, awful gurgling noises, representative of the uh, the masterful sound design, just to uh, to immerse you completely in the uh, in the terror. So it's definitely not human. I've never heard of such an animal. In no way is it a costume. It sounds crazy when you say it, but monster is the only word for it. But I don't think I'm crazy. It's a monster, and I killed it. So, got a gun. And there's some slightly innocuous comments. <laughs> it's not that I hate clothes, but this isn't the time or place. And what I really like, um, Silent Hill 2 does this as well. If you step in the monster's pool of blood, uh, you just get this little trail of bloody footprints that follow you. And that's just a neat detail. And you can use yeah uh, the tab key. Uh, to swing the camera around so that you can see. Tell from here that it's dead. Should I call the police? Not like they'd believe me if I said someone's been killed by a monster. Indeed not. Okay, so this monster here uh, is labelled in the game documents as a closer. And there's been a lot of analysis done on them, I think. Because they are a funky looking kind of monster. Um, but they're sort of feminine coded and you can see that they have these enormous hands and since they first you know since they appear in the mall uh, a lot of a few people sort of make make the judgment and I, I quite like the explanation that is sort of representative of of greed that or something similar because it's someone with an arm you know loads of shopping big shopping bags basically for arms or something like that um, but there are sort of other, they're very mannequin-like, as a, as a lot of Silent Hill enemies are. It's sort of the Silent Hill look, if you like. Um, fleshy, fleshy, disgusting mannequins. But no no spikes, um, no no teeth, no, no big claws. Nothing like what you'd see in sort of other more, I guess, traditional um, horror. It's horror anything, really. And there's a little poster, I don't know if you can see that, little poster for Silent Hill 2 on the wall there. Um, but Silent Hill, yeah, um, in general, I mean, not so much the first game because they were still figuring it out, but from Silent Hill 2 onwards, uh, the games, even the ones uh, not designed by 
uh, the original art team have this sort of relative thematic consistency, except for maybe I haven't played it actually, um, but I have I have downpour sitting on my shelf. Though I have heard that uh, the monsters in downpour are not particularly uh, Silent Hill like. So these enemies, oh yeah, they never get old. And you can see that on hard difficulty as well, that when you, when you run, uh, when you're sort of in a sprint, uh, that she will uh, sort of crash into the wall and slow you down. Like when I, when I was crashed into the wall, I couldn't open the door. And it doesn't seem to be working on these walls, but um, you sort of see what I mean, that you can't... In this game, movement is very important. Uh, you can't be going sprinting literally everywhere because otherwise a monster might get you. I'm just going to keep saving uh, um, just because now I'm paranoid that it's going to crash. More than, I, more than I'm paranoid that I'm going to die. Though I probably will die. So yeah. Um, that door's locked, so we have to go back this way. But yeah. Technical difficulties. So many technical difficulties. So the dogs um, in here, you could say that they do have uh, certain certain symbolism to them. Um, I'm gonna just realize that I should, probably should have opened my map, huh? So where haven't we checked? Um, oh yeah, I need to go out that end. Ouch! I need to swing the camera around too. So the camera, um, a lot of people and I, I concur, when they go back to play these kinds of games, no matter how... I mean, they're hard to access, but when they go, when people go back to play these kinds of games, it is pretty hard, um, you know, uh, to get used to the camera when you're used to having full control over it in uh, more, modern, more modern titles, like the modern Resident Evils or something similar. Okay, so... Where does this spit me out again? So this spits me out here. So I don't want to go up to the left. I want to go down. I went the wrong way. Okay, so elevator's broken. We can go through this exit and take the stairs. Slightly funny walking animation up the stairs. But I think what... Like, even if, even if you don't find these games uh, as scary as perhaps they used to be, um, simply because of the controls, um, it's the fact that the control is taken away from you a bit with the camera uh, that makes them really effective, right? Okay, so we got, yeah, these weird, weird things. Uh, so they're very, uh, very fetus-like. Um, okay, and we got another closer. I think the little creatures are called, um, are limp bodies i think and again they weren't designed with anything s truly symbolic in mind but uh, nonetheless uh, we do get some symbolism it's bread but i'm not really hungry so i guess i don't need to worry about it still bread and still bread it's bread yes it is bread thanks heather Okay. It's a flyer. Crispy toasted bread right to your very door. Everything's on sale, Helen's Bakery. Well, no one's here, you know. Why, why not take some bread? And yeah, obviously, so the, the, the mall is now uh, empty. Um, what we do want from here, though, is the tongs. Good thing I didn't leave without them. Because, as with all... Silent Hill titles, it is the innocuous stuff that solves the puzzles. So you're gonna you pick up a random, seemingly random collection of items and string them together. I think Silent Hill 2 was probably the worst about that. Uh, it made you pick up some really weird uh, things. I'm gonna try and not engage too many of the enemies if I can avoid it because I do want to save ammo. Yes, yeah, I 100% I agree uh, about the, the fixed uh, camera angle issue because when they're done well, 
uh, it is it's it's brilliant. Um, <laughs> but then sometimes you just get this really nasty camera angle, and you can't you can't even aim or shoot at the enemies. And obviously that that's not what you want. I think yeah. Is there? I'm just trying to think uh, whether there's a game that does it sort of really consistently well. I mean, because not even not even the Silent Hill games, which which you know obviously I love, uh, can can pull it off consistently. Okay, so I think this is where I need the tongs. So I'll use the tongs to grab the key. Yeah, the original Resident Evil didn't do it very well either, if I remember. It's been a little while since I played that. Um, or at least... At least the GameCube remake. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any modern... Pup puppet combo, I guess, maybe slightly gets away with it a bit more because their games are a bit shorter, I suppose. Okay, so I can't go that way. Ouch! And this game does start off a bit more intense, really. Um, there's a lot of enemies, uh, and they come pretty quick. Phew. Okay, that was close. All right. So here's uh, here's the bookstore, uh, which on hard difficulty is kind of infamous. Um, so you can see there's a bunch of books on the floor, which is the uh, the clue that you need that you need to pick them up, which is good. Um, but we'll just scavenge around here. I do apologize if this takes me a minute. Uh, <laughs> I remember it took me a minute uh, last time I did it. Fear is foul and foul is fear. Put these books out of order. So that's your clue, right? So basically, when you're putting the books on the uh, on the shelf, um, we have all of these anthologies. And basically, the clue is that you're not supposed to put them uh, one through five. Uh, you're supposed to look at the spines. So, I'll just see if... Uh, yeah, so... Where will I place this one? So, you can see, yeah, you can see on the side there. Um, and I think maybe the reason I had such a trouble with it was because I was playing it on this old TV the first time I played it. Um, and you can just sort of try and see where the numbers are going to line up. So we have six, and then that looks like a four, nine, whoops, six, four, nine, seven. So that that was really smooth. I'm really glad about that. Um, but if you play it on hard difficulty, you get this really gnarly, this really gnarly puzzle that is fairly infamous in the Silent Hill, uh, Silent Hill fandom. Um, Partially because it's, um, what did I say, 6497? Yay. Save it here again. Again, because it requires you to have this outside information, um, and that is no way to do a good puzzle in any game. You shouldn't, you shouldn't require the person from the game to sort of break their immersion with the game and go take a trip to the library or something, you know. The 
one who will lead us to paradise with bloodstained hands. Claudia, right? Did you do all this? It was the hand of God. <laughs> Get it. What does she want me to remember? And this noise that you can hear now, that's the noise that plays right at the start when you boot up the game, which is cool. Um So yeah, that was Claudia. She's she's nice. And we'll run into her several times again. I think she has the same voice actress as Angela, I think. Which might be why I like her character so much. And this song is called Prayer, I think, off the Silent Hill 3 soundtrack. Delightful. So this is where it really begins, I believe. In the elevator. Okay, so we got the radio, uh, which is a traditional Silent Hill tool that we didn't really have in a proper way in Silent Hill 4. It was just located in the apartment. And here, yeah. And so with that, we are cut off from the rest of reality. And here we are now in the other world on high difficulty. So we'll see how this goes for me, really. Uh, these dogs, as annoying as all the other uh, dog enemies in Silent Hill. Okay. We got some health drinks here, which I'm probably going to need soon. What's my health like? I've been bitten a few times here. I'll drink one, two, apparently. All right then. Um, that, oh yep, yeah, ampule. It's going to help. Do I want to read a romance novel right now? And again, I really like the way, even though we won't be using them uh, during the playthrough, I really like the way that the uh, the health points are spread throughout the uh, game world. So you just sort of come across them. And it's sort of this ominous sign that someone or something has been here ahead of you and has been in this room that is meant to be a safe room. So even the safe rooms in, in a game like Resident Evil, uh, they they seem, you know, they might be a little dilapidated or something, but they seem safe. But this area, you know, it's got a bed covered in blood. The newspapers sort of been scrawled on with demonic symbols. You know, you don't want to hang out in here. Like, this is not a safe space. There's no nice music playing. It's, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> Alright, let my uh, my paranoia continue. Alright. Okay, so that's the uh, save room. And the radio was... I was saying something before about the radio, right? Um, yeah, that's that's a great question because actually, no, this is not the Enhanced Silent Hill 3. This is just what Silent Hill 3 looks like. Um, and it's interesting that Silent Hill 4 uh, is visually... You know less impressive than Silent Hill 3 like this is it's an outstanding looking game um, 
Here this character model is great, the detail in the environments is spectacular. I think um, a slightly different team uh, worked on this one. Uh, so some members of Team Silent uh, left uh, in between the development of 3 and 4, and 4 was originally sort of meant to be a spin-off game, so it was still meant to be sort of a Silent Hill game, but um, a bit not, not quite as important as maybe it turned out to be. Um, Okay. But it is definitely one of the best looking games uh, on the PlayStation 2. Without doubt. Okay. Now, I, what was I? Radio. Yeah. So the radio uh, is used to detect whether enemies are nearby or not. Uh, yeah, Henry. Yeah, uh, he looks. He looked a bit like a mannequin, really. Uh, but Heather, Heather really stands out uh, as a character on the screen. Got great character design. Um, with her big puffy jacket, puffy vest. I mean. Warning: When leaving the room, be sure to turn out the lights. It will be obvious if they are not switched off. This is really clever. I really like this moment. Turn off the light. Oh, something's still in here. It's the flashlight, which we also didn't have in Silent Hill 4. And I think both... So the radio did make sort of a cursory appearance in Silent Hill 4 in your apartment. You could turn it on to see whether your apartment was being haunted or not. But generally you can tell whether your apartment's being haunted just by walking within the radius of the haunting. Um, and the flashlight. We didn't have a flashlight because none of the areas were that dark. But now that we have a flashlight, the, uh, the game developers can use darkness and shadows to their sort of full effect. And to me, it is kind of amusing why they didn't have a flashlight in Silent Hill 4. I can understand the radio, because the uh, the replacement radio was a cool little twist, even if it didn't, even if it wasn't that important. But no flashlight and no darkness. Sort of a, a fully lit horror game is interesting, um, but just at least one dark level would have been cool, I think. Okay. So we got the flashlight, and we're just going to keep scavenging through this place. And there's going to be a lot of locked doors. This is the typical Silent Hill rhythm of uh, checking doors and sort of praying that the one you just tried isn't going to open because you never know what's going to be on the other side. For example, dogs. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, we're back in here. And I think off of here, I'll just swing the camera around. Yep. We can get a bulletproof vest, so this is a cool, another cool little gameplay uh, twist. So when you put the bulletproof vest on, it'll obviously make you do less damage. But it's a heavy jacket, so you can see that she moves a lot slower while she's wearing it. Um, so if you're trying to evade monsters, it's best to take it off. But otherwise, it's actually kind of helpful. Um, so we'll just, and you'll see now that there's no escape here. And that noise... Uh, little jump there. Honestly. So good. And we got the coat hanger. So I think if we didn't have the flashlight, uh, it would be too dark. Just see in here. Alright. Whoops. Not that way. I guess the one thing that's semi-predictable about uh, this game is that enemies won't follow you from room to room and like in Silent Hill 4 which was there was a positive twist that the enemies could follow you from room to room it wasn't positive that you couldn't down them for very long um, but it was still cool because it gave you this feeling like you were never quite safe and I just wanted to bring attention to the uh, the really jittery movements uh, lots of Silent Hill games in future uh, and as well as Silent Hill 2, use those kinds of movements just to freak you out. Uh, nope. To make it sort of sped up, exaggerated. To make the monster seem human, but not human. And I think that's a really effective method. Uh, Kojima used it in PT with uh, the Ghost Lisa. It's a great effect. Okay. So what we need is to climb up and out of here, I think using the coat hanger. So I'll just try and turn around. There we go. Okay. Cool. 
I think I yeah I was stuck uh, for a while when I first played this game because I didn't realize that you could use uh, the torch uh, to to find the uh, to find the coat hanger. So I just sort of ran around this corridor for like ten minutes, wondering what the heck to do. Okay. And yeah, we got real ladder climbing. No fade to black for me. And again, just this really sort of, you know... Oh, it's something like this be here. This is in the hospital. Just completely incongruous with the environment, which again just makes you wonder what the heck is going on. And up ahead here is a reference to Silent Hill 1. For a very, very brief moment, you could see a visual from Silent Hill 1, but I won't expand on that yet, because it will spoil this game. So she's talking about altars, but it turns out she doesn't really know what she's talking about. Okay, so on hard difficulty, I have a feeling uh, this next room is going to suck. It's the one I'm thinking of. It's filled with enemies. I'll just swing the camera. Oh no, it must be the one adjacent to this room. This room is fine. So you don't want to eat any bread, but fine to steal a ring. Okay. There is, yes, here it is. A walnut. Again, really weird uh, items that you're going to need to solve some puzzles. Okay, now there's going to be a monster in here. Let's see if we can kill this one. Help if I actually loaded my gun. And you'll see on hard on hard difficulty, uh, they're very hard to kill. Obviously, get up, get up, Heather. Okay, gotta get give them some distance. And you can see that big attack. So these monsters are really powerful. That big attack put me to red, and now, after drinking that health drink, I'm on orange. So what we want to do is probably find a way out of here. So, on hard, as you can see, uh, fighting monsters is not always exactly worth it. That's why I've been doing so much running past them. So even with the bulletproof vest on as well, that attack put me to red on hard. So you do have to be really, really careful. So it's locked, so we need the key for that. And to get the key, we'll need another item from back here. So we'll just reload the gun. Provided I have some more bullets. Yep. Okay. So the sound and volume of the radio informs you as to how close the enemy is. And what we want to do is we want to wrestle with the camera and position ourselves in the right spot and we just want to finish them off with some kicks and I think Heather can kick more than is actually necessary and it sort of adds to the feeling of uncertainty as to is it actually dead or not um, and doesn't help you when you are fighting groups of enemies because you're trying to like desperately down one of the enemies um, I think I'll save here instead try to down one of the enemies uh, and then it ends up that, you know, just kicking an enemy who's already dead, but you don't need to. So you get overwhelmed by the others. Is it? Okay. So we need something to crack open the walnut. I'm not sure why she couldn't use the gun, to like the butt of the gun to crack it open, but a stickler, you know, for due, due process. So in here is the room I was thinking of. Yeah, it's lovely. Uh, ouch. So these enemies don't do quite as much damage. We're going to unlock that door. And just check our map. Okay. So we need a key. Um, what I'm going to do is just check. So yeah, I've only played this game 
one and a bit times. So I can't blaze through it just as easily as Silent Hill 4, which I basically know by memory. And playing this on keyboard is a lot different than playing it on the on the uh, P good old PS2 controller. So I'm having to get used to that too. So we can go up this escalator, this unmoving escalator, but I just wanted to check uh, these other rooms. Nope. Okay. Can we go down the escalator? That is the question. Yeah, so you go down and you'll see the Endless Abyss, which is a favorite little Silent Hill uh, tactic. Just to block you off, you know. Not a sign or anything, just a giant, giant abyss. Okay. Upstairs, uh, there's going to be some more dangerous friends. So because I haven't played this on hard as well, so two reasons I'm constantly saving this, because I haven't played it on hard, and because it crashed before, and I would hate for it to crash again. I think that was indeed just a one-off. Okay. So there's a puzzle door here, but we can't do anything with that yet. More dogs. Oh. Okay. Got anything in here? It's just this. I really like just the glimpse. The glimpse of the sky out there you can see is just sort of this ugly red color. If I remember correctly, the only thing in here is a reference to Silent Hill 2 if you have a Silent Hill 2 save on your memory card. Which, at the moment, uh, I don't have it set up so that I could recognize it, I don't think. Broken lock. Story of my life. This one. Okay. Mmm. Delicious. Barbecue dog. So you can see it's one of the sort of monsters, I think. Who the hell would make something like this? Furthermore, who the hell would eat it? Something in the dog's stomach. And you've got a cook key. So we need that key uh, for downstairs, I believe. Just check, yep, grab the first aid kit. Broken lock. Alrighty. So I don't think we need to return here, but I do really like this. I don't know why, but the, the sort of the empty restaurant environments in the uh, Silent Hill series always speak to me for some reason. Um, I don't know, it feels very sort of a space that's meant to be inhabited by lots of people, I guess, being empty. It's just sort of in its own little way profound for me or something. I don't know. I just like them. I like them as spaces. Um, they're cool. Even with this horrible barbecue dog on the table. Yeah, man. I have so many videos that I need to make. Like, so many scripts that I have uh, just sitting in my... Uh, sitting on my hard drive that I need to make a video out of. And that that's one of them. Just uh, so such a innocuous niche topic but like yeah restaurant areas and silent hill <laughs> where to dine where to dine in silent hill i don't recommend that place but no i was working on a script yesterday so i'm hoping in the next couple of weeks i can um i can actually release a new video and i'm hoping that opens the floodgates for me really uh, i'd love to start releasing videos again and Twitch as well, it's a great way to do this. Um, I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> Gives me an excuse to play Silent Hill, so... <laughs> Alright, steel pipe. Okay. Save again. God, I'm paranoid. I don't think I need to save, actually. That's, maybe that's what the thumbnail should be, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that's a pendulum. I hate pendulums, because they can fly and I can't, and it's not fair. Now, this is the bakery, I think. 
Yeah. So there's no no bread. No bread. But what we do have, of course, is the all important detergent. So we're gonna need the detergent. Um, especially if we plan to open our own start our restaurant, we need to wash the dishes. Love this corridor as well. Getting louder and louder and louder. What could go wrong? Okay, so basically, um, I think I might be missing an item for this. There's a horrible cloud of bugs here, and what we need is basically to poison the bugs. So for that we needed the detergent, um, but we also need to, uh, something else. So I think we need to crack this walnut open. So we'll just remember that this is here on the map, in this tiny little section and down the bottom. I'll totally remember that. Uh, and we need to navigate our way uh, to find some more items. Oh, yeah. So this bucket, that's what we're going to mix the ingredients in to basically create this bug spray somehow. And that's why we've turned the fan off as well, so that um, the, uh, the poison won't immediately disperse through the ventilation system. You'll see that, yeah, Heather's head uh, turns to look at, you know, something that you can interact with. Uh, sort of subtly sometimes, but that's in telling us that, yeah, we can interact with this door rather than the other one. So it's a, it is a good way to sort of counterbalance the uh, the sometimes ugly camera. Did I just go back through the... Uh... Yes, I did. Just as I was saying, it's a good way to counterbalance the camera. Here I am walking in a circle and going through the same door again. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so I have to check my map. Um, hmm, where haven't I been? I guess I'll check. Yeah, I'll check back this way. I suppose just in this little corridor where I killed the monster. The closer, and see. Okay. So I'm pretty sure, yep, uh, elevator, so it's the same elevator we took before, and obviously that's not going to work again, broken lock, there's one, two more doors in here I have not tried, but I doubt either of them will work, um, that one, and where was it, this one, yeah, so that was both of those, wasn't it, um, where else haven't I gone, guess I could, Try back downstairs, I suppose. So yeah, all I really need to do is uh, break that, uh, that walnut open, I think. There is a way through to the other side, but yeah, to do that we need to kill the bugs. Uh, have a f Where have I not checked? So anywhere downstairs that is worth checking, I don't actually think so. There's a couple of rooms in the back. I guess I could look in. Ah, oh, and upstairs. Did I check everywhere? I think I checked everywhere upstairs. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we're going to go back down the ladder and I'm just going to check uh, these areas. I might check. Uh, yeah, I'll keep it on for now. Down the ladder we go. Okay. Oh, 
go back into the sort of the back areas and just see. It's probably still going to be an enemy right outside. Yep. I don't think I can uh, state just how much I hate those dogs. I mean, and you know, I love in real life dogs are great, but these dogs might go. Ah, dodged him. So I've been in this room. Is there anywhere else back here that I haven't gone? Yeah. I don't think that any of those will lead anywhere, but it is worth trying. Being thorough. Being thorough is always... Always good in survival horror games. Especially titles like this that have weird puzzle solutions, right? So you can hear the dogs snacking away. And the dogs themselves are a reference uh, to, the en to the dog enemies from the first game and to the first boss from the first game, uh, which is a giant lizard with two heads. And these are dogs with two heads. And the question is... Yeah, I don't think there's... Yeah, no. They're just going to immediately go for me. Ouch. Fortunately, yeah, the dogs aren't always accurate. Uh, but when they are, they hurt. Oh, I might die. I might die. I think it's that, uh, that's that vest that's keeping me alive, actually. Okay, yeah, nothing, nothing down here. It was worth a try, it was worth a try. So we'll go back upstairs. Not back into the elevator though. I've... <laughs> it's a bad sign that I've listened to so much Silent Hill music that I could recognize the other areas uh, where this current uh, distorted nightmare track is playing. Uh, or is that or is that a good sign? I don't know. Yeah. So I can climb the ladder again. Exciting gameplay. All right. So we need to go back into these sort of to the back areas, but the question is because I can't go any further this way because it's completely blocked. Just a big gap here. Um, I can go up, but I can't go down the escalator. Um, is there any other room I can try? I guess I can go back into the room with all of the numb, numb bodies, not limb bodies, numb bodies. With all of the weird little uh, tadpole, tadpole people. Okay. Here they come. Uh, I'd help if I could shoot. Oh. Nothing else in here is there. I don't think. It's so hard to tell when there's enemies pursuing you. Yes, yes, I know you're all fans, but... Oh. That was just uncalled for. Fine. Jeez. It's not easy. It's not easy having... I think such. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Just can't get enough, right? Yeah.
but yeah. Fortunately, my subscribers are, are much nicer than they are. Okay, yep. Yeah. Dead end down here as well. Um. Okay. So dodgy health, but what the heck? One more time. Is there anything? Uh, See, so yeah, I thought. <laughs> Most of them are great, right? Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, so that was a that was a no show. Um, I bet you I've missed something so small and so obvious. It's gonna be I'm gonna be kicking myself. I'm pretty sure I did this on my first playthrough as well. That um, there is something really, you know. So there's steam coming out of the pipe. Uh, my health is okay, so I just have the walnut. I need to combine the walnut with something that can break the walnut. But to break the walnut, I'm pretty sure I need to get past those bugs. I guess. I'm dodged past these guys again. Okay. Um. Alright. So we got the detergent. Because you can't, it's not just the detergent, is it? You have to pour something else in too. If it's not, then I've wasted a lot of time. Because you can't, this door is locked. But you can't get past the bugs. Can we just pour the detergent in to start? Yeah, that by itself won't do any good. What's in... Pendant. Examine. There's a jewel inside. Cool. So that is going to indeed going to be important later. House key. That's also going to be important later when we hopefully get home. Um, yeah, so there's something inside. And do not mix. So we need to mix with something. So that's our clue, right? That's our clue. Um, and I know we need to mix it with something. But I can't mix it with something because I can't find it. I'm going to check upstairs one more time. Um, oof. There's always one item in these games. There's always one item. Oh, that was close. Get up, get up. That was really close. Because you can fall off ledges in this one. Is it something simple just on the... No, it's not on the table there. That's fine then. That would have been embarrassing. I'm going to check the upstairs restaurant again, actually. Upstairs restaurant and... Is there anything else? Yeah, maybe in fact the puzzle door was something I needed to interact with earlier. Might as well just try everything. Seriously? Seriously? Okay, move out of the way. I made a reservation at this restaurant. Okay. So, yeah, something bad is in the pot. This door is locked. If I swing the camera around, is there anything? No. Just wines, and there was just the key in the dog. So yeah, I think I was right before in saying that yeah, there was nothing else to worry about. Just a roasted dog anyway, shouldn't let that creep me out. No, of course not. Okay. 
So, what we want to try then is um, that door. And I want to see... I want to remember what the deal with the door is, because maybe that'll help me. Because it has been a little while since I played this one, and I have, again, only played this one once. Oh, wait. That's hardly helpful. So I think I tried all these doors, didn't I? Except, you know what? I'm just going to check in here again. Um, so yeah, really there's nothing in here. Where do you find that last chemical? The howling, at least, is a good indicator that it's coming after you, even if you can't see him. Dodge the closer. So I can't use my, um... Oh. Uh, can't use this, can I? No. So yeah, it's the thing in the walnut I need there. Okay. So what do I need then? Um, hmm. Just trying to see if there's a door I haven't unlocked. It doesn't look like there is. Um, okay, keep looking, because it's not to do with the TV, is it? Um, it's got to be somewhere I haven't checked. Oh, uh, yep. Up the, uh, you might not be able to see it, but up the top, there's a, there's a bathroom I haven't checked. Typical. Okay. Yeah. Alright. So, you see, it is worth checking all these rooms, because you never know exactly which room uh, the solution is going to be in. Just a shame that Happens to be the last room that I was, that I'm going to check. I think it's literally the last room I've opened. And probably the reason I didn't find it this time was because I spent so long last time uh, down here that I scoured the room and picked that up way long ago. But this time I was like, okay, flashlight, coat hanger. Get it, go. Uh, where are we? This one? No. The one back. This one. There it is. Right there, just sitting right there. So that's all I need. So now we just run back up. Mix the detergent with the bleach. Kill whatever the heck those bugs are. The good thing about those monsters is that they're really slow, so they're really easy to dodge. Unless they're in the really tight, like those tight corridors, uh, that, like the one I killed was, you can just run past them all, basically. They don't really pose a threat in this game. Um, and it's not worth, it's not really worth bothering yourself with too many enemies on hard difficulty. How many bullets do I have left? Uh, some. 25, okay, that's more than enough. 35 rather, okay. I'm happy with that. So now we have the bleach. I'll try not to use any more bullets if I can help it. Because uh, there is a fight at the end of the section that might take a few bullets on hard. And I'm not really interested in fighting him with a pocket knife. Or a pipe. I've... I feel really bad, I keep running into walls. So 
horrible grinding noise. But this time they're all on the wrong side to get me, which is good. So I shouldn't need to go back out that door at least. All right. So I guess this is also um, part of the part of the problem with some of these um, older survival horror titles is that the the solutions to the puzzles aren't necessarily difficult, but they require the location of um, several sort of highly specific items uh, across uh, a large map and while it's you know it's okay it can be easy as you've just seen for a uh, player such as myself uh, to miss to miss one so we'll combine combine this and use them in the bucket and that is the scientific method by which you create bug spray and then so the bugs will all be dead. Now we have to turn the fan back on so that we don't die when we go back in that room. And they're all dead. Okay, I'm going to save again here. And I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel uh, about the fact that I can save anywhere. Um, it's kind of interesting um, because it removes some of the stakes, I suppose. Um, you know, while there's no auto save, you can sort of just you can save anywhere you like. Um, and I guess maybe if I wasn't streaming it, I wouldn't be saving it every you know every this, like this often. Um, but since I am streaming it, it's I guess it's not too much fun for uh, to go back, you know. A long way to watch someone just play the same section they just played through again. That's my reasoning anyway. Nothing in the cardboard box. Okay, beef jerky. Um, that item is used to distract uh, specific enemies. Um, so I never found it that useful when I played it on PlayStation 2. Maybe I'll find it more useful on hard. Um, but they never reliably went for the beef jerky. They rather decided they'd rather eat uh, eat some heather instead. Even though heather's got a gun and is shooting at them. Okay. So this is a really sketchy section because there's some big, big gaps in the floor. But fantastic ambience. Okay. We're moving, we're moving, we're moving. I think you can sort of tell, yeah, that the door is slightly ajar. And, you know, this is a creepy room, like... This is meant to be a mall store, and it's selling, like, medieval torture gear. I don't even want to think about what this platform is used for. No, oh, indeed. Shackles, broken in, gross. And just, again, in amongst this, this sort of really gross and grim imagery, you just have the save point. This again, looking at it makes my head hurt, but at the same time, it's like so familiar. I know I've forgotten something really important, but I also have the feeling I'd be better off not remembering it. So the pot thickens a bit. Cool. So again, yeah, we're just we've we've got this feeling of sort of extreme insecurity, and look at that. Sort of vice, and what's that going to be used for? That's going to be used on the walnut. Use the walnut on the vice, and we got a jewel, moonstone, and if you can guess, where do we put the moonstone? With the uh, on the crescent, on the door. Perfect. Okay, now all we have to do is make it back there alive. So the route to get there, we can cut yeah, just directly across um, as we come out this way. And we're going to have to, once again, dodge. Yep, and they've added dogs in here too, because, you know, why not? Why not add dogs? Moving, moving, moving. 
And of course, again, why not add more enemies in here? Might have to actually kill this one. So these ones here, don't take too many bullets. But we just want to keep moving past him. I'm really hoping I have enough bullets left um, for the uh, for the big fight. Um, okay, so we're upstairs. Lost my train of thought there for a second. Um, if I belong here to this door. Okay. So yep, there's still gonna be two enemies up here, isn't there? But we're just gonna we're gonna avoid them. We're gonna avoid them. Oh we're not. We're not gonna avoid them because they're both gonna be right there. At least it wasn't the closer that hit me, because the dogs don't do too much damage. Okay. Put the moonstone in the door. The door is unlocked. Save the game. So I've made pretty good time through this. Um, yeah, there's still yeah still a while left uh, for my plan time on the stream, so that's cool. Um, I'll be able to do a bit more, uh, and probably we'll get. Well, yeah, I really love this area of the game, the Haunted Mall, um, because it's just this perfect sort of subversion of everything about the mall, like that store that was selling the torture devices, sort of just ominous, empty, empty stores. Uh, the abandoned restaurant that looks like the tables are all set, but no one's there. Um, and just the monsters and this really, this trippy ladder. Okay. Uh, I might pause it here for a second. Uh, just give me one moment. Alright. Uh, can I save on the ladder? No, I can't. Cool. Can't save literally anywhere. But... Alright. Yeah, so. Gonna encounter a pretty disturbing enemy here. Strikes me just now, actually, that that boss, uh, he's, a, he's a lot like um, this other, this boss in an indie game. Uh, it's really short, really good horror little indie concept, proof of concept game. But I can't remember the name. Um, it's by the people who made Perfect Vermin. Um, that's a good game, nonetheless. So this enemy uh, isn't very dangerous, to be honest. At least I don't think he is. He's pretty easy to dodge, but he's pretty gross, uh, and obviously very, very phallic. Um, so we've got, yeah, this pretty grim uh, symbolism. And, you know, he's not a nice-looking... You're not a nice looking thing. I 
way he goes again. So this is why you need all the bullets, because you don't really want to get close to him, but with the bullets you should be fine. I love the music too, it's cool. Reload. Oh. Oh no. I should have kept an eye on my health. I can do better than that. Continue. I underestimated him. I think all the bosses on Silent Hill on Hard uh, really are uh, a bit more, uh, you know, a bit more profoundly difficult than they were. Like a lot more health, sort of thing. That's what I've read anyway. This is my first time playing it on Hard, so we'll see what happens. Shouldn't get too cocky though, huh? I think. Yeah, how much health do I actually have right now? Might as well... Uh, I'll save it for a bit. And when the camera yeah, pans up like that, it's a good indication just to get the hell out of the way. There's a lot of really subtle cues that are really cool. Here he comes again. Gonna use it. And I'm gonna reload my gun. I think he's called Split Worm, this guy or something. And yeah, the symbolism obviously remains obvious. Because this game is, like, the fears are all very, uh, very adolescent, and there's a lot of fear of sex, obviously, is one of the, one of the main topics of the symbolism in this game. And this is a pretty big and not-so-subtle reminder of that theme. Okay, he's going to be stupid there, he's going to be stupid, I don't mind that. Where are you? Here he is. I just want to try and stay off to the side, right? That's what un that's what undid me before, I just was in front of him. Bye! Oh yep, yeah, I'm too far to the side there. Oh, okay. That wasn't it either. Up, up, get up. Come on, Heather, get up. Don't just lie there. Health, moderate. I have one healing item left. I don't really want to use it, but if I have to... was close. Reload again. How much health I got? How much ammo I got, rather? 15. Okay, I got 25 more bullets. Better make them count. Love this music. So driving. But the boss fight is not mechanically complicated. Like, kind of a boring boss fight, but then again, survival horror boss fights are kind of hard to design. Okay. Hmm, still not yet. 
I'm just a little worried about using it when I don't have to, you know? Shoot! Because it is the most powerful healing item, and if I could, I'd rather save it. Because I'm that kind of player. Yeah, to some degree with survival horror, especially classic survival horror, you are kind of limited uh, with what you can do. There we go. Good. I didn't have to use it. Yeah, you're kind of limited with what you can do in terms of uh, bosses. So it's no surprise, really, that the survival horror genre uh, evolved the way it did into sort of more modern, you know, RE2 make and RE3 make and first-person shooter types. Yep, playing again with with reality is old Silent Hill. So he, there we were fighting this giant, disgusting monster out of you know someone's nightmares, and well, we're fine now. We're back in the normal mall. Um, so yeah, it's probably time to leave because that was kind of a funky experience and wasn't much fun. So we'll head. We'll head off. Um, where do I need to go, in fact? Oh, yeah. We're going to head to the subway. So we're just going to leave right at the front door. Carrying the handgun like it's the most normal thing in the world. about this. Why don't you start by telling me what happened here? And that monster. What the hell was that? I don't know any more than you do. All I know is that things are getting really screwy around here, and I got a weird feeling it's got something to do with me. Maybe I'm just an innocent bystander, but I I can't feel sorry for you because you dragged me into this. If you hadn't found me... What are you talking about? What's so special about you anyway? If I knew that, I wouldn't be so confused, would I? But I know there's something... Something I've been running from and forgot for a long time. I love this song too, Walk On Vanity Ruins, I think it's called, but the, the album version uh, adds some lyrics in, which happen to be the uh, the hard the hard mode uh, riddle from the bookshop uh, earlier. And you'll see it's just weird, like, who, who decided to put this in in the team? But it's great. It's just terribly designed cat food poster. Growing strong and healthy Minmo. Cat foods, Minmo. Brilliant. Uh, but now we enter the part of the game uh, that make a lot of that makes a lot of people quit because the start of the game, you know, amazing showing, uh, sort of drags you right into the horror. But now uh, we've entered into the subway, 
Um, and you can probably already tell, but it is really, really hard to know where you're going. Because um, all the walls look the same. And all the doors look the same. So a lot of people get... Uh, and there's a couple of nasty little sort of unexplained bits a little bit later on. So understandably, I think as well, a lot of people get a bit fed up. Uh, and just sort of put the game down at this point. But obviously, I'm going to try and push through that. Not like that, Heather. Okay, so... As well, I really like the um, the voice acting in this game. I know a lot of people um, go on about uh, the Silent Hill voice acting being pretty amateurish, but I think that amateurish... Uh, the amateurish nature of the voice acting adds just a lot to the to the characters. Um, Heather in particular is really well voice acted in this game, and so is uh, Claudia. And I do like the detective as well, um, Douglas. Sadly, I think the voice actor f um, passed away uh, just after his uh, voice lines were recorded. So. His performance in this game is, yeah, sort of his his way of living on. There's a subway map. Um, she won't take it with with her though. I think we need to find a loose one. But a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people point to the fact that uh, science scripts are are a bit clunky, and yes, yes, they can be a bit clunky, but they're full of emotion and they're really they're they're really earnest. Um, which is part of why I like them, and they they have they have the courage to tackle topics that a lot of games, especially at this time, simply weren't interested or brave enough uh, to tackle. Really, and I think that's really impressive. Um, a lot of games these days still have trouble dealing with these kinds of topics. I mean, been this way, I think, haven't I? Um, you know. Uh, they have trouble with confronting some of the topics, and I understand that because they're really hard topics um, to confront. But and Silent Hill doesn't always do it perfectly, perfectly. But the fact that it does it so right uh, for such a long time, I mean, I find it really admirable, and it's one of the one of the many, many reasons that I love this series, especially these first four games. So you can probably already tell um, that for most players, uh, boredom is going to set in pretty quick because from this sort of incredibly engaging and tense set of circumstances, so from the opening sort of nightmare sequence in the in the amusement park and then uh, the fight through the mall, now we're in these really boring, empty subways. And of course, it, it does get spookier later, um, but it is... It is a bit of a departure, um, and despite how much I love the reoccurring Minmo, it's everywhere. Uh, this town must really, really love uh, Minmo Cat Food. Well, either that or Minmo Cat Food is a corporation that has a lot to throw around. Um, but you really can see that it's a struggle to find where to go. Um, and I keep running into walls. There's a save point. Still no map, but I think there's a map around here somewhere. I hope there is anyway, because um, otherwise I'm going to have to draw a map, and that's that is going to slow the stream down a little bit. Even though I really love doing that sort of thing. Um, what's up with these stairs again? Okay. Here we are. Yeah, here we are. But I'm glad I remembered where that was. So we got our map. Now this is going to help us a lot because it just gives us a way to see yeah, where we've already been and where we need to go. Um, so we need... I can't remember which... I think I just read it just before. Um, I can't remember which station exactly we need to go to, but we do need to wind up at one of these stations somewhere. Um, specifically, and it's of course in typical Silent Hill fashion. It is not going to be easy. So that's an hour of gameplay. That's not bad. 
to get to the subway. And yeah, I'd love to speedrun this game at some point, but obviously I'm not quite experienced enough yet with this one uh, to be able to speedrun it, um, judging by the amount of time I spent flailing around looking for that bleach. Um, I simply don't remember where all the items are. Need to play it through more, but it is one of my favorites, uh, favorite games in general. Um, it's really, really good, and 100% uh, worth a play uh, today, even though it is really hard to find. Which I think is is one of the biggest shames about the series is that Konami seems to refuse to make any any of these games easy to access, except for Silent Hill 4 for some reason. Um, so we can hop on the tracks, but I'm pretty sure something bad happens to us if we do. We're going to test that theory out. Okay. So you can hop down. But if you run too far either way, so she doesn't want to cross that middle section. So we're sort of stuck to the side of the tracks. Um, and yeah, we've got... Hard to see. Um, but yeah, so when you when you go there, uh, you trigger this inescapable cutscene. And she gets run over. So you can't run too far up or down the tunnel. You have to stay near the platform. Okay, uh, so continuing again. Alright, so that's just yeah, a note uh, for myself as a reminder and for viewers that do not step on train tracks. Um, especially not in creepy haunted Minmo subway. Okay. We're just gonna, we're just gonna keep searching. We're gonna just look for as much stuff as we can in here, um, because there is basically one route that we need to use to get to the end. But it can be a little hard to find. Maybe I should take my. Oh no, you can hear the dogs. Yeah. I won't take my bulletproof vest off then, because I don't really want to get eaten. Climb back up. We just zigzag. Yeah. So it's a nice open area. We don't really have to fight any of the enemies there, no matter how scary the music is. We don't have to worry about it. Um, so let's go back up this way. I believe we'll need to go back down to that platform later, but not now. Because again, we're just scavenging for supplies uh, and looking for the way forwards. I think there's some cool notes as well somewhere around here. Did I come this way before? I did, yes. Um, we'll go down to platform four then. Hazel Street, which I think is where we need to go, I think. here. I read this a long time ago. It's a, no it's a nothing little occult magazine. Seemed like a bunch of crap to me. It's not so bad if you just read it for fun, though. The souls of those who died suddenly by suicide or accident don't realize they're dead. Sometimes they stay put and haunt that particular place. These spirits have lost their human senses and memories and can only keep replaying the pain and sadness of the moment they died. The pain can get so bad that they turn to humans for salvation or they begrudge humans their lives. At such times, they can possess humans. Places known as famous suicide spots or high accident areas are often to blame. You should be careful when approaching such locations, especially on the day or at the time the death occurred. That is, if you don't want it to happen to you too. Just a fun little... Fun little aside, right? And perhaps a reference uh, to the ghosts of Silent Hill 4, but they didn't die by suicide or by accident. Although, actually, one of them did come to think of it. One of them did die by suicide, and he was the worst of them all. So, probably indeed. Since these, since the two games were basically being developed alongside one another, uh, probably was a reference uh, to that. So, 
So I just, I don't know, I, I really like the amount of detail that they just fit. Like, even though this is a boring, like, this is not, it's not an exciting space or anything, right? But it's still a space that they've put a lot of care into. Uh, the wall textures and uh, the, just the textures on the banisters and stuff on the railings. You know, it's cool. Like, it's cool that they're able to uh, push push the PS2 so hard. Okay, what's up? These these stairs is just the other way back up, isn't it? Okay. And you can tell that there is something in here that we do not like. Something in the subway itself, not necessarily in this room. Okay. Um, where do I want to go? I want to go... Can I go through... Was it through the turnstile, was it? Yeah, through the turnstile. Back up. Uh, wait, there's a door here. Yeah. Don't think this opens. Like a lot of these noises just go unexplained and that's that's what makes them creepier. Uh, they're playing and you don't know where it's coming from, why it's happening. I mean you don't know any of that. I think the part of the reason the subway as well that doesn't work is Oh, I should have gone. Yeah, that's the way I should have gone. My bad. The reason the subway doesn't work is because the map is so vertical as well, uh, so it's very easy to get lost. Because there's all these stairs, and they all lead to different places. Okay, so from here, I want to go yeah through that door, and then I want to go to platform one and one or two, or just those platforms over that way. Yeah. Should be should be able to go through this door too. Quite for another half an hour or so. Um, all right. What do we got? Menmo locks doors. So you can tell that this is one that we're meant to open, obviously. So we need a wrench or something or some pliers, I think, to get rid of that bolt. Um, but if it just says the lock is broken or something generic, then you know that oh, this is never going to be unlocked. I can stop worrying about that. And that's a neat little way to do it. I still, you know, it's all these clever little solutions that add up uh, to make a good game. Okay. Excuse me, coming through. All right, so yeah, this area and we've got no train. We'll just keep zigzagging because we're looking for a staircase on the other side, I think, or something. Another, yeah, it's just over here. I think we want to go down here. Where does this spit us at? Yeah, that spits us out here, which is good because that's where we want to be. And we've got the nutcracker, which I think is what we were looking for. To open that bolted door. So yeah, uh, no way to get through all this trash. Absolutely no way that could ever be done. Nope. Go back up. I can appreciate she doesn't want to do manual labor during this time though. Arch. Just gonna check down here. That's unlucky. I was hoping not to get hit by any of those dogs. Uh, so yeah, this is the other side. Path is blocked with trash, and you can see that there is very clearly someone dead 
under here. So it's not just trash, but yeah. yeah there we go. Is someone sleeping? All this red stuff around here is blood. This guy's not sleeping. Why am I not the least bit surprised? I think that nightmare is numbed my senses a little. So yeah, good thing about Heather's characterization over the course of the game is that um, while well, you see that she starts off pretty, pretty afraid, um, she really uh, becomes a lot stauncher. Ouch! In the face of some of the enemies and the horrors that she's going to see later on, and there are horrors later on. This is indeed uh, one of the most disturbing uh, Silent Hill games in terms of imagery and visuals. There are some pretty, pretty disturbing things as well. Some connotations to some of the scares um, that are pretty chilling, really, when you think about it. Okay, where was that locked door? Just over there. So I'm going to save it again because it took some damage. Why was me? All right. I gotta say, I think I'm enjoying streaming this a little bit more than four. Maybe it's the unfamiliarity as well that's helping me. It's helping uh, my sort of my feelings here, but I feel like I'm also able to provide slightly more interesting commentary on this one too, which is good. Um, okay. Maybe it's just general experience being more comfortable streaming, I suppose. But this is a good game. This is a great game. Okay. Don't know how many times I can say that. Down we go. Okay, so we got a creepy train. This is a... Uh, to say the least, this is a Silent Hill favourite, really, isn't it? Creepy train. Alright. Um, I'm going to save it before I get on the train, actually. Because the first time I played this, I did miss something important, and I have a sneak... Well, you didn't need it to, f to finish the game. Um, it was a weapon that could have come in great great use. Um, so I'm just going to check I don't miss it. Uh, what do we got? Shotgun shells. Okay. And the weapon, surprise, surprise, is a shotgun that I missed somehow in my first playthrough. So I had to struggle through the whole game. Uh, minus one weapon. So, and somehow I did not notice this. Maybe, it, again, it probably was a small TV. So no one I know would give me something this gross. I'll take it anyway. It should come in handy against the monsters. So you got this creepy, and immediately the radio starts when you pick up the shotgun. So simply, I'm not sure how I missed it, to be honest. Because um, I went down here, and found that, yeah, there was... There must have been something else that caught my eye, um, but it obviously wasn't the shotgun. Oh yeah, so this is an enemy called an insane cancer, and he's a charming fellow. He's this morbidly obese monster. But what you can do, hopefully, is just calmly walk by him, so you don't have to fight them. You can just just walk by, because they do a lot of damage, uh, so we don't really want to fight them. Um, and most of the time, uh, you can avoid them. Sometimes there's a trigger uh, that wakes them up automatically, like you pick up an item. Uh, but in that case, uh, since it's the introduction to those enemies, uh, it's not going to wake them up just because I picked up the shotgun. It's just going to spawn them in. Alright. So here we are again in sort of the, the very... the bowels of the... Uh, bowels of the beast of the subway. Okay, so again, we'll just check along here, check these doors, you know. I think this is the trip, this, so this should be a trash pile, but we'll just see if there's oh, a trash pile or door. No, door. Yeah, that's right. So there is a trash pile in the way, but we can't see it. I was hoping there'd be something, uh, you know, just like another thing on this side of the trash pile, another health drink or something somewhere. That's okay. All right. 
So again, um, the insane cancers, uh, I'm not sure specifically what they symbolize, but they are pretty creepy. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what they symbolize beyond the obvious. Um, the sort of, you know, I'm looking for the words here. What are the words? Mine's gone blank. I guess, yeah, fear of disease and uh, unhealthiness and that sort of thing. But again, yeah, a lot of the monsters in this game were not designed with um, symbolism in mind, which I found really interesting when I read it. Um, the question is, I think I want to be on the other side right here. I want to be on the other side. There's this really annoying section in the subway uh, where you have to be in a very specific place. Uh, and you do have to sort of go onto the platform. Uh, go onto the tracks, I mean, step off the platform, rather. And you have to sort of make your way past the end and quickly hump, hop up before the train kills you. Oh, no, that's just, that's just not nice. Oh. Let's see if there's anything here that's useful. I don't think there is, is there? This that's that this is darn dog. Ow. Two darn dogs, okay. Okay, so now again, we hit a slight dead end, right? And we need to figure out uh, where exactly uh, we need to go. So hang on. I'll just check. Uh, does the house key tell me? No, it's not going to tell me. Uh, I'll examine one of the maps. I think she says something. Bergen Street train at platform three. So it's really hard to see on this sort of low res map, um, but we need to, we do indeed need to get to platform three. So maybe I was in the right spot after all. Um, my gut instinct was correct. So we'll go down here. Can't save on the stairs. Okay. So I can't tell that sound sounds a lot like the say so yeah, Bergen Street. So we are on the right platform. Save it again. Because this can go wrong, I believe. And again I might be I might be forgetting what I have to do. So maybe there's something else I have to do and I'll get run over for no reason. Um, but we'll see. Yep, there's the door, there's the door, there's the door. I was right. The lock is broken. Oh shit. The dogs are going to pin me, and I'm going to get run over by the train. Because you have to get back on the platform. Get back on the platform. Get back on the platform. Come on, here they get back on the platform. Hope I was quick enough. I don't think I was, was I? Did that, did that count? That did count good. Okay. And we leave the subway. So the subway really isn't that... Um, it seems bad, right? Like, it seems like this really sort of endless space. Um... But if you, it's that, I think it's that door, it's that door that trips people up, because who in the heck is going to figure out that you need to, when every other train is, is run you over for trying to run further, why on earth would, would you run further on? Like, it's only that tiny little, I can't even really see it now, but just this red light, right? And it's very, very faint, um, and the game sort of arbitrarily feels like it's punishing you, so this is one of the few... Silent Hill sort of puzzles or bits that I don't really like. Oh well, I suppose. <laughs> Alright, uh, so I need to get on the train, but to do that I need to get go back up and climb down to platform 4. So that's, I think I was getting getting the events mixed up in my head. So we'll go down this way. 
I will try to fight my way to the front of the train and see we see how long we have left of the stream uh, for there from there. Okay, run, run, run. Did I go down the wrong one? Yes, I did. Yes, what am I thinking? I need to be on the other side. Oh. So maybe, yeah, maybe when I fight to the front of the train, oh, that'll be a good, indeed a good place to stop. So what we need to do now is we need to work our way back through uh, and get to platform three, which is where exactly... So many layers. Oh, yeah, so we just need to get back to our save point um, from here. So we'll follow, we'll follow our route back up, yeah. Okay, there'll be some closers up here if I remember correctly. And the radio gives them, well, not closers in this bit, but uh, back up in the uh, main platform section. The insane cancer should still be here, though, blocking the stairs yet. So just give them a wide berth whenever you can, because just, yeah, a, a symbol of unhealthiness and, and they're sort of male coded as well, so this. And they try and pin Heather, so that's obviously got some uh, significant connotations there. Oh. Um, yep, so go, just keep going this way. And you see that even with the bulletproof vest on, you're still going to outrun the closers. They're very slow. So I do spend, you know, again, if this was a speedrun, I probably wouldn't be wearing the bulletproof vest, obviously. It seems like a dumb strategy, but for a... For a normal playthrough, especially a hard playthrough, I don't, personally, I don't see why you wouldn't wear the bulletproof vest, um, aside from one specific segment uh, later in the game where I probably will need to take it off for sure, but in here, nah, it's fine. Especially since these areas are mostly pretty open, so you can sort of weave your way through. I guess now I'll definitely heal, my goodness. Um, heal, and I'll get out the shotgun. So I was without this weapon. Uh, my first playthrough of Silent Hill 3, so some of the later boss fights are a real struggle because I had like 50, 60 shotgun shells, but uh, yeah, <laughs> no no shotgun to actually use them with, and there's only one shotgun pickup, of course. Um, it's not like you can find it later in the game, and once you leave the subway, you can't come back, so I was down weapon, I was down one weapon. Oh. Hope I'm going the right way, huh? Nah, wrong way. Just keep keep weaving in between these pillars is the best way to deal with these guys. Is this right? Like I thought I was in the right spot here. Oh, I need to go one further back. It's a long train. Uh, where's the next? I have to go down the other staircase, I think. So go back up here. See, I said that I said that the subway was almost over, but there was still a bit of running left to do. Okay, should be able to board from the last car. Yep. Not entirely sure why she had that reaction. This is the train that she wanted to take home. And this is the train she boarded. And subway doors normally do close, but... I guess, you know, stressed out. That symbol's drawn on the floor. I hope I don't get cursed just by stepping on it. You know, already having a bad enough time, you know. What's, what's one more curse? Okay. So this train is filled with enemies. I'm really hoping I can avoid some of them, but that might not be the case. Got 
die. Wasted a lot of bullets with that again, but there'll be more where that came from later on. Reload, have my drink, kick it until I can walk through it, swivel the camera again. Okay. Okay. Just a dark and atmospheric train car. Better than one filled with enemies. And there's the first the first big one. He went down quick though. Hmm, why did he go down? Um not sure why he went down faster than the little ones, but not complaining. Go, 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 go. Some more shotgun shells. Yep, yeah, should be able to get to the front of this train and finish up. Uh. Okay. Anything in this one? No, I know there's an insane cancer on this train somewhere. There he is. I'm going to save because maybe we can sneak past him. Um, certainly didn't go that way for me for the first time, but that's also because I thought you had to fight him. I didn't realize you could sneak past him because I hadn't encountered the other ones because I didn't have the shotgun. Nope, so he does just get up, um, but you can just slip past him really easy. Which is good. Okay. Empty juice can, yeah, nothing of interest here. No supplies. Let me reach the front of the train. Cool. And here we are. I mean, I suppose technically the subway is still going if you count this next section, which is the tunnels. And the tunnels aren't quite as bad, um, in my opinion. Um, but they do, they start off bad, um, but you can finish them up pretty quick. But So we'll, I'm going to run through and see if I can, it's sort of like a maze area, you know. I'll run through and see if I can get to where I need to get to. And then I'll finish up uh, for the stream for today. So it's, this has been a good one, I think. Uh, I've managed to get stuck into a lot of a lot of different uh, topics, and I'm going to try and expand upon them, both in a big video, uh, sort of that I'm writing. I'm writing so many scripts, yeah, you guys, it's it's crazy. Um, Pathologic, yeah, Silent Hill, uh, other other horror games. I got a lot in the pipeline. Um, maybe I've I put too much on my plate, but now I think I finally found the one I want to release next, um, and I'm going to try work on those and get them released. Uh, ASAP because I think it'd be really cool to start releasing more and more analysis videos Because that's kind of what my channel is uh, supposed to be named after right? So what we're gonna try and do is just book it past uh, all of these enemies uh, It is a big maze area, but hopefully I can find my way to the end Or at least to the middle because in the middle there's a map and a new weapon Here, yeah, all these mechanical noises. And Silent Hill loves to bring the environment to life. Loves to make buildings organic or breathing or living. And the sound of the monsters within do that perfectly. Cool, here we are. Um, here's the mall. And here's the map. Maybe with the map I can reach where I need to go as well. I can go for another 10 minutes or so before I have to shoot off and get some other stuff done. First aid kit. 
And what's my health like now? Okay, I'll probably use a health drink there. Reload. You can see the mall. Uh, I think it functions similarly to um, the Great Knife and Silent Hill 2, but. So it's got this really slow wind up attack. Uh, and I guess like the hammer in Silent Hill 1, too. In Silent Hill 1, also. Um, so it's very slow. It makes Heather very slow when she's carrying it, uh, especially when it's sort of readied. But it does do a lot of damage. Um, I won't be using it now. Um, I'll be holding on to the handgun, I think, for now. We'll see where do we need to go from here. Uh, you might not be able to see it. Um, trying to think of those two blocky rooms on the right of the map there. Uh, we need to get there, but first I'm just going to run down here and check. So these tunnels are really atmospheric, and I think that's what brings them above the, um, arch. that's what brings them above the subway for me, because they're a lot creepier. Like those big things, those big ones looming out of the darkness are really, really freaking creepy, you know. Okay, got some health drinks, which is good. One of the bottles is empty. So I'm gonna need. So I say the body must have been crushed by something heavy. With with that, then God, how awful. Let's see, yeah, it's, uh, it's not good. Someone dead again. Okay, so we have a wine bottle which we're gonna need. And now all we need to do uh, for this stream is yeah, make it to those to those rooms. Uh, what's my health like? I think I might take a health drink now since I picked up a couple. Yeah, I'll use both of them. That'll put me back to full. All right, let's run. Let's not run into the enemies. Okay. Keep, just keep jogging. Cool. And where's I? Yep, still going. I don't know why I remember this section of the game so much more prominently than other sections. Mainly, probably just because of the high volume of enemies, to be honest. And just these long, sort of dreadful corridors where you just got to slowly sort of... It gives you time for your mind to sort of build up the fear. And all of these weird noises, you know. Like, you just can't tell, like... Whether it's human or mechanical or something else entirely, you know, animal. Just these creaking noises. It sounds like something's moving above you. It's it's sound design, one hundred percent. That that sells. That sells a horror game for me. Um, if your game does not have scary sound design, I mean, it might still be a bit scary, but it's not going to be anywhere near as scary um, for me personally. I love to put. Like right now, I'm wearing some wearing some headphones. I got the sound turned up. I'm sort of fully immersed in the uh, in the experience. Okay, so here's the fuel tank. Um, and from here, we'll pop down the corridor again. So he didn't see me that one. He did now. Get up! Get up! And that's the reason we picked the wine bottle, because uh, we need to fill, fill it up. So we can run the generator on a single tank of kerosene and put it in H. So get some health drinks, health drink. Lots of math equations or something by the looks of it. Something else on the table here, some bullets for the handgun. I really do, especially on hard. Uh, I'm getting the impression that I really do want to stockpile uh, all of my bullets. Um, at the end of the corridor, I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I'll go there. At least not today. But it's sort of just a fake out room. There's nothing in there, but it's like full of pendulums. Uh, so if you go in there, you get killed for no 
really good reason. You don't get killed, but you get attacked. If you're not quick, you get killed. But it's just a cool, like, Silent Hill doesn't have to include those rooms. Like, it could just be, you know, every room is story essential, but it's the fact they're including some sort of dead-end rooms that uh, makes exploration feel more dangerous. That you have to face monsters that you don't necessarily have to face. And it's it's quite a cool feeling, really. Okay, uh, I'll load the kerosene into the tank. Or, heaven knows, I'll try. I think I might actually take the, uh, the bulletproof vest off. Drink. Items. Oops. I'm gonna run, because these guys are pretty fast, actually, aren't they, really? That's much better, isn't it? And we'll fill this up. Yeah. Oops. I'm not standing in quite the right place, am I? Right here. There we go. Here's him in the tank. And throw the switch. Awesome, so what they did was uh, drain some water, so now we can go down into the sewers. Which is just really, you know, that's the perfect way to get home, really. So, we'll save it here. And we'll continue from there uh, roughly the same time next week, I imagine. No, this is, yeah, this is good, this is a good uh, run of the game so far. I'm really happy with the commentary I've been able to give. So no, yeah, I'm I'm anticipating uh, next week's next week's stream already. But tomorrow I will be streaming. I will indeed be streaming um, Pathologic Classic, um, uh, and I am really looking forward to that as well. Um, I'm hoping that goes well too. But for now, of course, um, thank you uh, to everyone watching. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Stay safe, everyone.